One by drivetrain setups are nothing new. They're very popular on mountain bikes and gravel bikes. However, on road bikes and time trial bikes, they're not quite as popular, but there are plenty of advantages to be had. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set your bike up one by in five minutes. If you're unsure what one by means, it quite simply removes the need for two or three chain rings that are at the front of your bike as most common bikes would have on them. It also means you don't need to have the front derailleur or the little bracket that supports that onto the frame. This leads to two key advantages, an improvement in aerodynamics. So independent tests have shown that by removing the front derailleur and the small chain ring, you can save up to four watts, which might not sound like much, but over a 10 mile time trial, it's gonna save you in the region of about 10 seconds. And in terms of the weight saving, anywhere between 30 to 40 grams you could save by removing some of those components such as your inner chain ring, for example, and even more so if you account for the fact you're gonna remove your front derailleur. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to convert to a one by setup on a time trial bike, but it's gonna be the same whether you do it on a road bike, just the same as this. However, you are only gonna need one additional component, and that is a one by specific chain ring. This will feature narrow and wide teeth to mimic the inner surfaces of your chain and try to make sure that your chain is held as secure as possible because we are gonna be removing our front derailleur. So that does mean you run the risk of your chain not retaining securely onto the bike. So that leads us on to the first step of the job, which is gonna be removing the chain from our bike so that we can then in turn remove our front derailleur and the bracket that supports it in place. So first up, let's get the chain off. First step, removing the derailleur from our bike. It's quite simply a five mil Allen key to remove it off and then we can take some of the bracket off that sat in behind it. Now this bike is equipped with DI2, so I can quite simply unplug the cable and keep that tucked out of the way. Once I've got the derailleur off, I can then decide what I'm gonna do with the cable. First option, quite simply tape it out of the way, keep it out of harm's way. Now if you're gonna to commit to a one by setup, you could always push that cable to the inside of the frame, but that is gonna be difficult to fish it back out should you wanna put your front derailleur back on. So only do that if you're adamant you're gonna to commit to it. Now, if you have a mechanical group set on your bike, you are gonna to need to remove that inner cable that runs all the way through the frame up to the shifter. You can remove all of the housing that runs through the frame as well, and that'll give you a super clean and super tidy install, but it's not crucial. You just need to make sure you haven't got any cables flapping around in the way of your chain ring or your rear wheel. With the front derailleur out of the way, you can then see what we're left with. We've got the cable and the bracket on the frame. And quite simply undo the two three mil bolts that hold it on, tuck it to the side, make sure I don't lose it, and then refit those screws back in to block those holes up effectively. It leads us on to the next stage of the job, which is removing our chain set. Now all bikes are gonna have a slightly different chain set on them. So you need to make sure when you're getting your one by specific chain ring, that is gonna fit the bike and crank that you have. Some of them have got four bolts, some of them have got five bolts, but just double check, make sure you order the correct one. At the time of ordering it, some of them will require specific chain ring bolts. So when you're doing that, make sure you double check if you need them, and if you do, order those at the same time. Cranks are back in, we've got our chain ring on, and the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that these are slightly different cranks, and we've now gained a set of pedals on the bike. That's because it's Ollie's bike. He's been using it for doing some time trials and some cool videos we've been making. Um, so he had this chain ring ready set up on these cranks. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is a five bolt chain ring, hence why I couldn't put it onto the other cranks. Um, when you are replacing your chain ring onto the bolts, you need to make sure you do them all up evenly and to the correct torque. It's gonna vary depending on what bolts and what cranks you've got, but somewhere in the region of about seven Newton meters should be nice and secure and you shouldn't run into any problems. Now, the next thing that we're gonna need to do is to put the chain back onto the bike. We don't have the front derailleur, so we haven't got to worry about that. But if you've upgraded to a larger chain ring, you are gonna to need to make your chain slightly longer in accordance with that. 
Now the correct length chain is going to be long enough so that you can use well, your only chain ring on the front but still enable you to use the large sprocket on the back. As I said it's going to be longer than what it was originally so chances are you're going to have to invest in a new chain and if you're unsure what length to make it as I said, you need to make sure you can use it in that large sprocket, but not be too long so the chain doesn't become slack when you're in the smallest sprocket. It's kind of a bit of air on the side of caution if you're unsure how to do it, because you can always make the chain shorter, but you can't ever add links back in if you've taken them out because it's just never as strong again. So go a little bit of trial and error until you get it just right. So there's your bike set up with a perfectly adequate one by system ready to go. All you need to do, give everything a quick check over, make sure it's running nice and smooth. Now for the most optimal setup, there are three other things that you should try to consider. First being if you ride on particularly rough or loose terrain, it might be worth considering a rear derailleur which has a clutch unit in it. This will control this lower cage to retain the chain a little bit more securely than an open one like this. Maybe ideal if you're riding on rough terrains, but not crucial. Secondly, could be a chain keeper or a chain retention device. This is a small unit that goes in place of where your front derailleur is and just helps to hold the chain in line with the chain ring. Again, useful if you're riding on rough terrain, but you will, of course, lose a little bit of those aerodynamic benefits because you put in an item back on the bike. Final thing to consider when optimizing your setup is what size chain ring you choose. So the number of teeth that it has on it. Some time trial specialists are opting for a larger chain ring to ensure they can use the middle of the cassette a little bit more often and keep their chain in a straighter line. This is gonna save them a few watts in their drivetrain efficiency. But you do, of course, need to make sure it's suitable for the speeds that you go in to ride at because you don't want to be stuck with a gear that's too hard. So it might also be worth, a little bonus one here, considering a wider range cassette to ensure that you've got an easy enough gear to ride wherever it is you want it. So there you have it, how to convert your bike to a one by setup and take advantage of some of that free speed. If you have any one by setup tips of your own, let us know in the comments section down below. But that's it for me. See ya.